train rail, rubber mallet, Here's the first fitting and also you can get a view of the final coat of coal tar epoxy. Put that on yesterday. Looks like it's going to hit 60 every day this week. That should be enough to cure it. I want to cover up all of these attachment points to make the water flow over the boat smoothly. And I'm building it really close to the hull, which I don't actually want because then if it vibrates, it'll scrape against the hull, cause a rest point. The reason I'm doing it that way is because when I actually put it on, it will be further out because it's going to rest on top of the nuts, which hold the keel on. These are the bolts I'm going to use to attach the keel to the boat. Some of them don't have nuts. I'll get those from the hardware store. They're all random sizes because this is what I found on the side of the road. These are all automotive grade bolts. I need to make a cover from here to here to smooth out the water flow across those spaces. I've got this odd shaped metal scrap that might do the trick. We'll see. So far, so good. Bolt it on. I learned from this slot that as I bang it in this way, the slot's going to move over. So here's where I would normally put the slot, but I'm going to actually cut it right there. Next I'll weld this piece on and then cut this off. In order to get this piece on, just slide it on there. Then you have to press the piece in just a little bit. It's easy to do. And then it rotates into there. I've still got one more thing to do. I'm going to trim this because that's too close to the hull for me. But other than that, it doesn't touch the hull anywhere. And I'm ready to put some coal tar epoxy on it. Here's cover one. It's covering cooling pipes for the engine. There's cooling pipes on each side. Here's what the covers look like. They're not bolted on yet. Using this magnet to hold this one on. And that's how they'll sit on the hull. They're all bolted on onto tabs so that if they rub against the tab that won't compromise the hull and create a leak. Except for here, there's no tab, but it, this doesn't matter if it leaks anyways because there's going to be water filling this compartment. This is the piece that will go on the front of the keel attachment framework. And that is the last thing I need to do on the bottom of the boat, so I'm ready to flip it back over. I think rolling it back over to rest on its bottom is going to be easy because in here is the engine. It's sitting like this, so it wants to go back down that way. Got the rope attached to the keel attachment point. What I'm hoping is that I'll get some pull that way which will draw it away from the house and then as it rotates underneath it will sit where I want it to. I've got a lot of tension on the other side. So now I'm switching to this winch. Pull off that tree. It's on a cleat at the top see what happens. So 
So now we'll go on the other side, put some tension on, just keep on repeating this process. Here's the beginnings of the second part of the keel. This is the bottom of the keel. Here's a mystery that came up as I was grinding away. This says 6001, Illinois. This has an S. I don't know about the rest of whatever is here. This is an S. O, U, can barely make out the T, the H looks pretty clear, and then there's a W, K. Maybe this is an A? And I don't know what the rest looks like. This one says Krupp 1880. This one says Joliet 1886. The Roman numeral 7. And then the number 6 LB. You can tell that because it says it more clearly here. 1886, Roman numeral 7. 6 LB. Can't make out much on this one. Looks like a 1, maybe a C. And then a zero or an O. This is an X. And then this looks like a double zero. It took about four hours to make these two cuts and the cuts that created all these smaller pieces. First snow of the year, only about an inch. It's going to be in the 30s all day today. But that means the ground is really hard and I'll be able to move the engine hoist around on it to lift this very heavy piece of metal. It's over 800 pounds. I have a bunch of hole saws and I tried this one out, but I never but I just don't get good results. It doesn't cut the metal very quickly. What I find is a smaller used up cutoff wheel on a grinder works pretty well. So that's good enough for now. I'm going to be welding around here, so I'll clean it up with a grinder if I feel like it then. I'm going to call this luck because I need to get this rope out. I was going to try to wiggle these pieces of plywood out, but I think this is taking up most of the weight. Now it's down and I can start welding around those pieces. That's it for today. There's a storm coming and it's going to last for about three days. 
So I have to spend the rest of the day getting ready for it, covering up all the bare metal and hoping that it doesn't get soaked.